Dune Part 1 offered us a look at Dune Part 2 through the visions that Paul has of the future, or possible futures, and some concept art developed during the production of Dune Part 1 will make its way into Dune Part 2. I'll also be showing some concept art which could be the look of Fade in Dune Part 2. Stay tuned for that. Will Fade have hair? Let's get straight into this Dune news. Costume designer Jacqueline West for Dune Part 2 spoke to Deadline and revealed some very interesting details about what we're going to see in the movie. She says that working on Dune Part 2 was a lot more labour intensive than Dune Part 1. They made a lot of costumes. And she revealed that in Part 2 we really dive deep into the different worlds of Dune. We see what the Emperor's world looks like. We go to his planet. We spend a lot of time on Gaedi Prime, the Harkonnen planet. We spend a lot of time in Stellan's Skarsgård's world, who plays Vladimir Harkonnen. Fade Rautha Harkonnen, played by Austin Butler, also comes into this one, brilliantly played by the actor. Jacqueline West says that he's pretty fabulous in it. He's brilliant. She also goes on to say that all the worlds get expanded. It was about creating three separate, different looking worlds, and also revisiting the Bene Gesserits, the age old ones, with these costumes that almost look like Egyptian mummies. She then says she thinks it's visually stunning, the sets, the cinematography, and the concepts. Now attributing Egyptian mummies to the Bene Gesserits is very interesting because there is a link back to Egypt through the Bene Gesserit and I believe that they are even linked in terms of originating from Egypt in the books because the book of the Bene Gesserit is described as the Azhar book and Al Azhar is a religious school in Egypt. So to call the costumes of the Bene Gesserit as looking like Egyptian mummies is fitting for the Dune universe and correlates to what Frank Herbert first wrote in the 60s. So what are these three distinct different worlds of Dune? Well, I believe one of them is going to be Arrakis, which is Dune, and the look of the Fremen people. Jacqueline West also said that Chani's white dress was actually designed for Barney's in the 1990s, and it was part of the Nomad collection, and that we'll get to see even more fashion designs from that collection for the Fremen CH clothing. So it isn't unlikely that Jacqueline will use fashion clothing for other characters in the Dune universe. So the Fremen will be wearing clothing similar to what we see Charney wearing in Paul's visions. This could also mean that Paul and Jessica wear the same clothing too, when they get to a place of safety with the Fremen. Then of course there's going to be Kaitain, which is the Emperor's homeworld, and it's going to be very regal looking, with smart delegates. Similar to what we've seen in Dune Part 1 when they first arrive on Caladan with the Herald of the Change. You get to see the delegates in their attire, which is black and white. And we also get a glimpse of this in artwork, which can be seen in the Modifius RPG game, Dune Adventures in the Imperium, Houses of the Landsrad. We get to see the domed buildings of Kaitain, and the black and white checkered floors, which I've been told is a pretty accurate depiction of Kaitain as a concept for Dune Part 2. It's a lush green world full of waterfalls and beautiful architecture. This is the wealthiest planet in the known universe because it is the home of the Emperor. They focus on Gedi Prime, homeworld of House Harkonnen, and I was in doubt whether they were going to go back to Gedi Prime because now that they have taken over Arrakis, I didn't think they would go back to Gedi Prime, I thought they were going to stay on Arrakis. So they're going back to Gedi Prime for the gladiatorial arena where Fade Rautha is going to fight with one of the Atreides lieutenants, Lieutenant Lanville. And playing Fade Rautha in Dune Parts 2 was no easy task for Austin Butler because he had to train with someone very special to gain his menacing look for Fade Rautha. Austin was trained by former Navy SEAL and Marine Sniper Duffy Gaver, who now works as a stuntman who has been in films such as Inception, Tenet, and many more. He also works as a celebrity trainer, which is what he's done for Dune Parts 2, working with Austin Butler to get him into shape for the role of Fade Rautha. I trained a lot for four months for whatever may be thrown at me, just to get my, my body into a place where I could be a physically imposing presence. And then trained a lot in Budapest as well, once, once we kind of knew more of what was going on. So we're going to see Austin Butler in his gladiatorial glory. But what is Austin Butler going to look like when he plays Fade Rautha? Many have speculated whether he will have hair or whether he will be bald, like the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, played by Stellan Skarsgård, and Raban, played by Dave Bautista. 
In this concept art, we can see a figure on Gady Prime. The figure walks down a corridor, similar to the corridor that Dave Bautista's character, Raban, walks through in Dune Part 1, when going to meet the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen. The figure is wearing a visor, or dark shades, a black shirt, black trousers, leather pants maybe? And leather boots. But I think most importantly of all, to answer people's questions, he has a full head of hair. This particular concept art comes from Dune Part 1, and was created by Deke Ferrand, but it was so dark you could hardly see the figure, so it almost went unnoticed. And this may have been a concept for Dune Part 1, with plans for Fade Rautha to appear in the first part, but of course he didn't appear in Dune Part 1, and was saved for Dune Part 2. As we know, there were concepts that were already created during Dune Part 1's production of things like the Navigators. I'm kind of surprised that the guild navigator is on the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. Trust me, when he told me that, I just looked at him and go, what? And he goes, Carlos, I know you're going to get mad at me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but we, I, it's too much. There's too much. We need, to sh we need to make it smaller so we can tell this story well. And I'm like, I know, but you got, you can't do that, man. We got to put him in there. He goes, okay, well, do a design for him. And then maybe you change my mind. And I'm like, okay. And I did. And I went around and around and I finally came to it well, by the end of the week that I was allowed to work on it, right? And um, and he saw it cause, and he goes, Carlos, you found him. This is the navigator. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And he goes, so he's in, right? He goes, I can't promise. I'm like, what? So I know for a fact it's not going to be in there. But it will be for the next uh, film. So it's possible that this is a concept from Dune Part 1 of the look of Fade Rautha that was planned during the production of Dune Part 1. But this may be an outdated concept because during Dune Part 1, in some concepts, Raban had hair and this idea was later scrapped. But I can't see the Dune production removing a good head of hair on Austin Butler because that would be the same as removing Timothy Chalamet's hair. You just wouldn't do that. And Fade Rautha is supposed to be the opposite, or the evil equivalent, of Paul Atreides. But what do you think? Do you think Fade Rautha would have such a cool, smart, casual look? Do you think Fade Rautha is going to have a full head of hair? Or will he be bald like his uncle? Let me know in the comments section below. A special thank you to my channel members and Patreons for your continued support. Check out some of my other Dune content, or some of my other popular culture videos here.